more on this, Dr. Angela Rasmussen is my guest, a virologist at Columbia Mail Man School of Public Health. She's joining us today from home, Washington. Good to have you on the program today. Thanks for having me here, Todd. Tell me how concerned we should or should not be. What do you think? I think that we should be concerned in the sense that we need to continue following and monitoring this virus. But right now, we don't need to be particularly worried, as there's no evidence that this virus is really transmissible among humans. Um, there's also not really any evidence that it causes uh, severe, serious or severe disease in humans. So while um, it is concerning to find a virus circulating in pigs that can infect human cells and has potentially infected some of the workers on those farms that have been exposed to it, um, right now, there's no evidence that this is a very efficient human pathogen much less that it could cause a pandemic. Right, and obviously you can appreciate when people see the headline like we have on our screen, China warns of new virus, uh, people are gonna start to get very concerned given what we continue to go through and have for the past six months with uh, COVID-19. Absolutely, and I think the most important lesson to take from this is that this is really an opportunity to stop a potential pathogen before it emerges into the human population. So we should really take this as an indication that we need to be more prepared. We need to follow viruses like this that do pose a potential risk, um, but we need to be smart about it and not panic about it. And, and what are researchers, I'm just curious about the genesis of it, like what they're calling it and how they actually discovered it. So they're calling it G4, and this virus was discovered uh, during routine surveillance. So we know that pigs um, and chickens and ducks uh, are uh, carriers of influenza virus. And in pigs in particular, um, they, they can carry influenza viruses and allow them to adapt to become more efficient at infecting human cells and causing disease in humans. So these viruses are monitored in uh, many farms um, around the world, including in China. So that's how they discovered it. They discovered that this virus in particular is what we call a reassortant. That means it has genes from multiple other strains of influenza that are circulating. And some of those genes come from the 2009 H1N1 pandemic virus. So that is, uh, that is concerning, and that, I think, is why people have been concerned about its uh, potential to create another pandemic. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to. Flu reassortants are very common, um, and that's why we need to continue monitoring this, as I said before, but we don't need to panic about it. Um, we should just focus on uh, pandemic preparedness. And the study found elevated levels of this strain in the blood of Chinese pig farm workers, but saying the strain is, uh, it, there's no evidence anyway that it's actively circulating in humans and the World Health Organization is gonna monitor the findings. How confident are you that the WHO is going to be able to do that effectively? And if this gets worse, be able to lock it down and quickly? I think that that is um, one of the lessons that we've learned, unfortunately, the hard way during the COVID-19 pandemic, is that international collaboration and cooperation, um, usually managed by the World Health Organization, is really critical for having an effective global response to pathogens such as this. Um, I think that it's going to be uh, incredibly important for WHO, uh, for the Chinese authorities and scientists, as well as scientists from the international community to work together to make sure that we are able to monitor this and potentially prevent it from spilling over into the human population. Dr. Rasmussen, great to have you with us here in Canada. I appreciate uh, our ability to tap into your expertise and uh, answer all the questions. My pleasure, Todd, anytime.